This is my SIM1 computer by Centertech System Corporation. It previously belonged to composer Richard Teitelbaum. And I'm going to desolder this gunk here so I can solder a new connector here that I think will give me a serial connection. Okay, getting that gunk out of there wasn't hard. Okay, now to get this to fit, I'm going to have to clip these off and maybe share some of this other stuff off. Okay, I have another problem, which is that these parts here are in the way of this here. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit dodgy, but to avoid this part here and this part over here, we wound up just getting rid of this bit. So this is going to be a little bit jank, but it should work. Okay, so my son is going to solder in these pins. Okay, these are all soldered in. So it turns out that the serial connection for the SIM1, instead of using minus 12 and 12 volt logic like old school RS-232, it does use zero and five volt, but it uses zero and five volt inverted logic. So in order to actually hook it up to my computer here using a TTL serial cable, we needed to hook up a 74LS04 inverter going both directions to invert the signal. Behold, Perry the Platypus, the Invertinator! Okay, that's enough of that. Let's uh, actually test this thing out. So you're gonna press return, and now nothing happens, but what sort of happens when you press Q? <gasps> Look at that! What is that? It's, it's a, a period. period. So okay. now we're gonna key in this program over here. Let's see here. M200? M200. Oh, uh, oh. Try it. Okay, there we go. ER, I'm guessing, is error message. Okay, and now... Just start just, entering program here? Yeah, so the C1... Uh, C1. 05. Yeah, and I'll speed up this part in the video. Carriage return! Okay, now we can look at the memory type M200, and now use the... I guess it's the... Greater than or less than symbols to key back and forth. Yeah, so... So like that, I can go forward through memory and I can also go backward through memory, but I'm just gonna... Okay. Yeah. Now hit carriage return to get out of that. 4C, oh, oh, 8, oh. I wonder what's after 12, whatever. Carriage return. Okay, now let's go, type G, 200. No, not go 200, it's go 203, sorry. Okay, yeah, because that's where the program starts. My bad. Now type... Wait, then what's 200? What's in 200 then? 200 and 201 are the numbers we're adding. So let's look at memory location what's 202. 202? Yeah, so it should be adding... Well, let's find out. So it should add C1 to 05 to give us C6. There we go. So this so, is working. It's not exploded. So this is running at 4,800 baud, but what happens if we try it at 9,600 baud? That's going to be so fast, ain't it, Dad? Yeah, so let's fast. try it. Let's try it. All right, Q. Uh, type M200. M200. Okay, so it doesn't like 9,600 baud. It seems like 4,800 is the best we can get. Yeah. La, 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 la. Whoops, that came off. Anyway, quick point. Both this... TTL USB converter that I got from Native Root, and the other one that has this kind of connector on the other end, they're both 5 volt tolerant. So even though they send out 3.3 volts and are generally designed to take 3.3 volts, you can send them 5 volts and they don't explode. So that's very convenient because I'm running everything here with 5 volt logic. So this chip will take 3.3 volts and accept it as a logical high signal, even though I'm running the thing off 5 volts. And it will produce a 5 volt for logical high and not fry the 3.3 volt expecting input over here. So that's convenient. And you don't want to assume that. For one of these types of cables, I forget which one it actually explicitly said it was 5 volt compliant. For the other, I asked on the Adafruit forum and somebody actually checked out the data sheet for the chip that's inside it to find out that it was 5 volt compliant.